In the former video, I have made two of the three most important acids, and it's the time to make the last one, hydrochloric acid. The thick acid is a filming and a colorless liquid, and is a 37% solution of hydrogen chloride. When most hydrogen chloride is the byproduct of the production process of chloronated organic compounds. The easiest way to make it in the laboratories is by reacting concentrated sulfuric acid with sodium chloride. I just used the table salt to replace the chemical used in lab. The difference is that the table salt used in food is usually contain anti-caking agent. And most of them is just something like potassium ferrocyanide, sodium ferrocyanide, ferric ammonium citrate, silicon dioxide, and calcium silicate. Among those chemicals, only the potassium ferrocyanide would react with acid and form hydrogen cyanide, which is just super toxic. However, the amount of the substance is so low that it is nearly irrelevant to the purify of the product. So, unless you want to make the super pure hydrochloric acid, it's more recommended using merely table salt. So, I build the apparatus like this. It has two parts, and the first is hydrogen chloride generator. The hydrogen chloride generates in the big flask and by adding sulfuric acid via the dropping funnel. The gas came out in the proper speed, which is just suitable for the water to absorb it. The reaction happened here is that sodium chloride reacts with sulfuric acid and forms sodium bisulfate and hydrogen chloride. If the mixture is heated up to over 300 Celsius, the next step is that the sodium bisulfate reacts with sodium chloride and forms sodium sulfate and hydrogen chloride. However, the sodium bisulfate would dehydrate to form sodium pyrosulfate at this temperature. Therefore, Adding sulfuric acid according to the second chemical equations is an unwise choice. So I plan to add 30% excess sulfuric acid. My dropping funnel here can store about 500 ml of sulfuric acid. So according to the second equation and the 30% excess acid, I weigh about 820 grams of sodium chloride. And to prevent the gas from leaking out, it's necessary to seal the joint between glass verses. The main methods for selling them include these three. The first is using Teflon type to fill the gap of the joint. The second is using some non-volatile liquid as sealant, like I have mentioned in the former video about distilling sulfuric acid, using concentrated sulfuric acid as sealant. But it's actually not a good choice when dealing with those highly polarity and volatile substance like hydrogen chloride because it can easily dissolve in the sealant and leak out. Moreover, I only have these metal clips. The third is using vacuum sealing grease as sealant, which in my point of view is the best one, because the main ingredients of it is just silicon oil and silicon oxide. It's low polarity and can work on the 250 Celsius, and that's just suitable for the experiment. Apart from those three methods, I still have another unusual one. It is powering ground the joint of the glass wheel by using some green pest. A few months ago, I had a rough trail about this, and if you want to know how it is exactly being done, please comment and let me know. So here, I apply the sealant on the joint with a cotton swab and roll the joint to sell it. The second part of the apparatus is a gas absorbing part. And to connect these two parts, I just use a Teflon tube. This kind of tube is extremely tolerant to almost every chemicals. The only problem is that it's too stiff to curve or link with stiff joint like outlet tube. So, so I unwrap the thick circle of Teflon type around the outlet tube, which can make the surface soft and can match the tube to make it being sealed. There are also many manufacturers provide something called PFA tube as well, which is soft and flexible, and it has a similar quality as the Teflon tube. It's more recommended. And now, it's the time to start up the experiment. I pure all the sulfuric acid and table salt into the funnel and the flask. Then, turn on the water pump to cool the gas down. The receiving bottle is cooled down with ice baths and being kept 
at a relatively low temperature because the process of hydrogen chloride being absorbed by the water releases a large amount of heat, which can not only dilute the acid, but can even cause the solution to boil. So it's very important to check the ice bath frequently. As I slightly open the stopcock and drop in the acid, the reaction is going on. At this point, the bubbles come out here, it's just the air. And as more hydrogen chloride gas came out, the bubbles just stop to come out and the gas disappear in the water. About a few minutes later, the first step of the reaction is done. So now I turn on the electric heater to make the second step of the reaction occur. As you can see here, the bubbles in the flask appear again. It means the second step is ongoing. However, a few minutes later, the bubbles just appear again. It means the acid is about 40% and could no longer absorb this hydrogen chloride. And finally, I've got a liter of hydrochloric acid. And once I open up the bottle, the white firm came out, indicating that the hydrochloric acid is highly volatile. And to show you how volatile it is, I pour some ammonia solution into a small beaker, which is also highly volatile, and pour some hydrochloric acid into a big flask, and then put a smaller one in it. The white smoke just generated in the beaker, which is consists of ammonium chloride. As a smaller version of it, two glass rolls is placed together, and each of them have a different liquid on it. The emphasis here is just the same as before. That's all for today's video. To see more interesting experiments about chemistry, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. I'm Chemchill, see you in the next video.